<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can easily jailbreak your PS4 on firmware 4.55 or lower. So yes, I did say you can jailbreak your PS4. I've done a few videos on this before, but they were on 1.76. So this is a new jailbreak, new firmware, updated stuff, all of that good stuff. So it should be easy enough, but I just want to cover a few basic things. First of all, this works on all models of the PS4, regardless of if you have a original, slim, or pro model. As long as you have a exploitable firmware, you should be good to go. Second, the firmware is extremely important. You need to go over to your settings, go over to system, and if you check system information, as you can see, my system is on 4.55. You have to be on 4.55 or lower. If you're on a lower firmware, I'm going to have a link down below in the description as well as many other links that are going to be related to this tutorial where you can download the update for 4.55 and update your console if you're on a lower firmware. If you're on a higher firmware, I get this question asked quite a bit. You cannot downgrade your system. I repeat, you cannot downgrade your system. The only way to do this if you have a updated PS4 is to either one, wait for new public exploits to get out, or two, you need to go and find a exploitable PS4, so something that is on firmware 4.55 or lower. I cannot stress that enough. Now, aside from that, you're going to need a flash drive, a computer handy, and a internet connection to your PS4. With that, I'm going to go continue the rest of this for a bit here on my computer to explain everything and show you all how we might be hosting this exploit and getting everything up and running. So much like the previous jailbreak, you are going to have to work with payloads and such. However, thanks to Al Azif right here, his PS4 exploit host tool has made this incredibly easy to do. So so we don't need to touch command line or do much else on here. And there's going to be two methods that we can use to uh, exploit our system. Either one, you could use a DNS server, or two, you can self-host on your own network. Now, just to get into this briefly, if you use a DNS server, that means that it's much easier to use, easier to launch. You don't have to think about it as much. However, you're up to the server owners. So if the server goes down, if it changes not in your favor or anything else happens, that's out of your control and you have to find another server. However, if you decide to self-host, you have all the control right there. You don't have to worry about any other servers going down. As long as your local network is up and running, you're good to go. The only downside to that is going to be you might run into network configuration issues, firewall block whatever it is. Nothing that Google can't fix, to be honest. I ran into a few issues with firewall, but I was able to get my stuff up and running within a few minutes. So I'm going to show you both methods, depending on what you want to do. But regardless, I'm going to link Al Azif's GitHub down below in the description and go over to PS4 Exploit Host and just scroll down here and go over to the releases page and download the latest one. Since I'm on Windows, you need, to, and if you are as well too, download PS4 Exploit Host Win. Don't get the regular one, get the Win version and just download this. Now, it might flag as a virus. I'm gonna tell you all, that's a false flag. It's trustable, it's fine. Make a exception for it in your antivirus. Once you have the zip downloaded, right click, extract, and go into PS4 Exploit Host. You want to find the readme file, and I'm going to read this with Notepad++. Now, I would highly recommend taking a few minutes out of your day to read this, because it's a well-written document, but what we're going to look for if we're going to use a DNS server is right here using remote DNS. Now, you need to come over here, and there's going to be some IP addresses. This is the primary, this is the secondary. These are the ones that Al Azif has available. If you want to use someone else's, feel free to, that's totally fine. However, I'm recommending downloading his host tool because he might change the IPs at one point, so just stay updated on here. Keep these on hand if you decide to do the DNS method. The second method of doing this would be to run PS4 exploit host itself. I'm going to show that later. I'm going to show you all how to do the DNS method and jailbreak, and then after that, I'm going to show you the self-host method. But now that we have that all on hand, I'm going to go back here, and there's this test PKG file. Now, I would highly recommend downloading this as well, too. This is just a very basic homebrew package, and this is going to be how to install package files as well. I will show you that in a few minutes here. And that's going to be what your homebrew will be and what your games will be. They will come in package files. So to do that, we're going to need a flash drive, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to copy this. 
but go over to wherever your flash drive is. I have mine right here. Make sure you back up anything that you need off of it. Right click and format. Now I have a 32 gig flash drive, it's USB 3, and there are two file systems that work for the PS4, FAT32 and XFAT. Use XFAT. The reason why I say this is because the PS4's games can be quite large, and if you set this to FAT32, you cannot handle any file sizes larger than four gigabytes. So XFAT does not have that, and it works with the PS4, which is going to benefit us. So go ahead, select XFAT. The allocation size is fine and press start. You can hit OK. That's fine. All right. That's all we need to do. For a package file, literally open up the flash drive, and this is the root of your flash drive, and paste it right there. I'm going to refresh, but that's all we need to do. So whatever package file you have, whether it's a piece of homebrew or a game, just put it on the root of your flash drive. With that, I'm going to right click and eject, and our flash drive work is done. At this point, we can now move over to the PS4 and I'll show you all how to set up your PS4 with the DNS server and how to jailbreak it. So for this, make sure of course your PS4 is on, plug in your flash drive, and now we need to go over to settings and make sure your network is set up if you're going to be doing wired or wireless. I'm going to have a wired connection, but you could just do the same thing here for wireless and just adapt it to what you want to do. So I'm going to go over to network go to set up internet connection and I'm going to use a LAN cable. Now when it gives you this option, go with custom. I'm going to pick automatic for my IP address, do not specify, and DNS settings, this is important. I'm going to hit manual and I have already set these two up, but these are the two that were in the El Azif readme file. So they might change, you might want to use your own DNS settings, whatever they are, but this primary DNS this is secondary DNS. I'm just staying on these four bits so you can take note of them. Once you put them in, press next. I'm going to do automatic, do not use, and test your internet connection. As you can see, IP address successful, internet connection successful. Those are the two things we need. So I'm going to go all the way back here. And now all we need to do is go to settings, up to user's guide, user's guide, and check this out. Once the web page loads, it's going to bring it up like this. So you can go to 4.55. And the first thing I'd recommend you do is press disable updates. That way, now this is what's going to do. It's going to load in the exploit. The payload's been dropped. You're all set. Disabled updates. So now your PS4 will not be able to download any new updates, meaning that you cannot accidentally update it through the internet. If it gives you a notification saying that it's downloading the latest update, it will fail out on you. So you don't need to worry about that. And if you're ever worried and you want to undo that, it's pretty simple to do. So to exit, you press the PlayStation button and then you can go back to settings, go to user's guide, user's guide, 4.55, and you can just press enable updates if you ever want to undo that for some reason. Now to explain these all, disable updates, enable updates, those are self-explanatory. For Dumper, this is what you need to use to dump your games. I'm going to go over that in a later tutorial. FTP, this is to enable FTP access, so you can transfer files to and from your PS4. HIN is the homebrew enabler. This is what we think of with the jailbreak, so this is going to be the actual jailbreak. And now for original, this is going to just have you sit at this screen right here where your system is waiting for a payload, and you can pop in a payload, do whatever you want to. So that is all of them explained. And I'm going to just exit out of that again, go to the screen, and enough messing around, I'm now going to jailbreak the system. So you need to go to your user's guide again, 4.55, and press HIN. Wait for this. And if it says there's not enough free system memory, just hit OK. It will refresh the page and try again. Hit OK. It's never taken twice in a row, but let's see. And there we go. And now it says, welcome to PS4 HIN. And just wait for this. I normally wait for it to go away and then I back out. Way I back out again is press the PlayStation button and that is it. Now, the way you can verify that your system has been jailbroken, so to speak, is go to your settings. And instead of going to user guide, scroll all the way down and you now have debug settings. Now, this jailbreak needs to be run every single time your PlayStation 4 turns on. So if you put it into rest mode, it's still going to be jailbroken. But if you completely reboot your system or power it off, you have to go through the HIN process again. Again, that is as simple as scrolling all the way up, going to user's guide, user's guide, 
4.55, and HIN. Wait for this to load up, and within a few seconds, you're jailbroken, you have the payload. That's all you need to do. So, easy enough, we have that down. Now, you can go back over to your settings, and I'm going to show you how you can install a package file. Make sure your flash drive that's formatted properly has the package file on the root of it, plug the flash drive into your system, and go into debug settings. Once debug settings loads up, go to game, package installer, and as you can see, your package is right there. So, press X on that, wait a few seconds, it's going to say add to downloads, it's going to install it, and that's it, so it can now be used. So you can delete that off your flash drive if you want to, but check it out. We now have test application, and this is the first piece of homebrew we have installed on this system. So if you press X on this, you're all set. It's playing, you're good to go, you're happy, your PS4 is jailbroken, congratulations. Now for anybody who's saying this is not what I jailbroke my PS4 for, the reason why I did that is to show and demonstrate that it is jailbroken. If you can successfully get to this point, you're ready to rock, and the process for installing a package file is the exact same with a game as it is with homebrew. So just pretend that's a game, and really that's about it. You're good to go at that point. So I'm going to restart the PS4 just to demonstrate to you all what you'll have to do every time you turn your system back on. So this is our PlayStation 4 restarting from a cold boot. Just have to wait a few seconds here. As you can see, important info and safety warnings, all that other good stuff. And once we sign in here, the test application is still there. Playroom's accessible, of course. But as you can see, test app has a lock on it. If you try and open it, it's not going to work. This is what's going to happen with any game that you install. So what we can do, we can either do the settings route, or you can just go to your internet browser. Wait for this to load up. 4.55 HIN. And within a few seconds, we should be up and running. That's it. So as you can see, it might still have the padlock on there, but if you press the X button, it's going to boot up. Congratulations, again, your system's jailbroken. You just have to spend a few seconds on boots doing that, and you're ready to rock. So that is how you do everything from a DNS server, and it seems easy enough. However, I'm going to show you all how to self-host your site as well too, just in case your DNS server you're using goes down or you don't trust it. So now when it comes to self-hosting, all you need to do is go over to where your PS4 exploit host is, right-click, run as administrator. If it asks if you want to run this over your network, allow in the firewall, go ahead and allow access. And as you can see, it's going to say right here, your DNS DNS IP is, it's going to give your local area network IP address. So this is what we're going to use for our DNS settings. So keep this in mind, just keep it up on your screen and keep this up and running. If you ever want to close out this program, you can just press control C and it cleanly exits. But for this, I do need this fully up and running. So I'm just going to keep that running there and go back over to the PS4. So now that you're back over at your PS4 and you want to self host, go up to settings, find network, go to setup internet connection, and we're going to do these same steps as before, do a custom setup, automatic, do not specify, and for manual, this is where it's going to differ. You want to put in your computer's IP address that is hosted on the El Azif tool. You want to type it in for both your primary and secondary DNS. Once that's done, press next, automatic, do not use, test internet connection, and that's it. It's now using your computer as a proxy server. So now you can go back and do the exact same thing, either do it through the internet browser or just do it through the user's guide, which I'm going to utilize. So come over here, come up here, and now this page, as you can see, it's a little bit different, and this is a good demonstration of it. The DNS server that we were using had a slightly different page than the self-hosted one right here. But I can go ahead and select 4.55 and pick whatever I want to. I'm going to do HIN again. Wait for this. Yep, that's fine. That's fine again. And there we go, PS4 HIN is enabled. So that is it. So as you can see, both have their pluses and minuses. If you can get around any type of issues you might have in regards to a firewall setting, I would highly recommend just self-hosting so that way you can just rely on your own payloads, you can customize it to your liking, whatever it is. However, if you just want to be lazy and do this whenever you want to and not rely on having your computer and a host up, then you can use a random DNS server that would be available. Anyways, that is it for the tutorial. 
tutorial here, your PS4 is now on version 4.55, it has been jailbroken, the internet browser is unlocked, which is the most important thing here that we're needing to do just for ease of access, and you can now install package files. Again, if you ever want to play around with a package file, a game, whatever it is, you have to run that hen payload every single time you reboot your system. But that's about it for this tutorial. I do have a few other PS4 4.55 related tutorials in the works right now, so if you are interested, please stay tuned. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you disliked it because you don't want to run payloads all the time, a dislike is fine as well, too.